Hello, and welcome to Appalachian State University's Digital Learning Resources. I'm Lucas Hicks, and in the past few videos, we've been talking about the Tascam DR70D. If you haven't already, please go check out the device overview and how to make your first recording. In this video, you'll learn how to change inputs in the basic menu, change input gain in the input menu, understand when to use the line and mic level input gain, use phantom power, use the DR70D with a KTEC case and multiple microphones, and use the slate tone for audio syncing in post. Let's get started. By this point, you should be comfortable navigating the menu. If not, I recommend viewing the video about the device overview and then coming back to this one. First, navigate to the basic menu and change the inputs for channels one through four to XLR TRS. Next, go to input menu and set the input gain for channels one through three to mic and set channel four to line. Here's a simple explanation of the difference between line and mic levels. Line level signals are higher or louder, and mic level signals are lower or quieter. That means setting the preamp gain to mic will increase the gain, while setting it to line decreases the gain. Whether you plug in a microphone using a quarter inch plug or an XLR plug, the input gain should still be set to mic. Use the line input level when plugging in the output from a soundboard, when plugging in an instrument, or when plugging in anything where a preamp has already been applied to the signal. Now that I know what the input level is for each channel, I can plug in my microphones. I'll plug a wireless receiver into channel one and a shotgun microphone into channel two. This shotgun microphone will need phantom power from the Tascam. I'll navigate back to the input menu and change the input gain to mic plus phantom. When supplying phantom power, there are some important warnings to keep in mind so you don't damage your devices. The main points to keep in mind are only supply power to microphones you know need it, plug in the microphone before turning phantom power on, and turn phantom power off before unplugging the microphone. Because of the form factor of most portable recorders, you usually need a rig to hold all of the audio equipment for a typical production. However, the Tascam DR70D allows you to attach a few devices without the need for an expensive rig. For instance, I can now keep an eye on my wireless receiver, my Tascam audio levels, and be a boom operator, and all I needed to do was attach this cheap neck strap. This one I actually took from a camera bag. If you need more versatility, KTEC sells a case made just for the DR70D. These slots on the top allow me to comfortably attach two wireless receivers. The plastic cover lets me see the screen while still providing some protection from the weather, and I still have access to all the ports on the sides. Now, let's set up this device for a typical multi-microphone recording. I have channels 1, 2, and 3 turned on and the file type set to mono. There are two wireless receivers on top, one plugged into channel 1 and the other into channel 2. And I have a shotgun microphone plugged into channel 3 with phantom power turned on. This setup allows me to have two people hooked up to wireless lobs and a shotgun microphone for backup or for recording NAT sound. The cool thing about this is that all of these devices can be controlled by one audio person. I have acted as audio and camera operator at the same time, and although I don't recommend that workflow, I'll show you how that might look. I have channels 1 and 2 turned on, dual recording turned on, and set to negative 6 dB, two wireless receivers plugged in, and I'm outputting the signal from the Tascam into the camera. This allows me to record a two-person interview with a second quieter recording as a backup since it will be harder for me to change the settings on the fly. All right, this is what that setup might look like. And I wanna show you really quick why it helps to use the slate button. So I'll go ahead and hit record on the Tascam and then I'll press and hold the slate. Woo, I can hear it in my headphones. And then I'll press record on my camera to record some video. Now I, I do have this patched through uh, from the output on the Tascam into my camera. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in the editor. This process may be slightly different depending on the editing software you use, but the general idea is the same. I've imported all the files and laid them into the timeline. All of the audio files started recording at the same time, so they're already in sync. However, my camera started recording afterwards, so the audio is a little off. I can clearly see a spike in the waveform where I added the slate tone, making it easier to sync the video to the recorded audio. Well, thanks for watching. Please click the like button if this video was helpful for you. 
Also, leave a comment down below of anything you learned from this series or if you have any questions or suggestions for future content. Be sure to check out the other videos from this series if you haven't already, and if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.